From Channel 11, this is your McAdam Community Television System. This is the Passing Years in Macadam. A new videotape. We've started tape number two. And our first uh, photo here shows us the an old flyer of many, many years ago of the new Vogue Theater, Macadam, New Brunswick. It's a gala opening on Monday evening, 7 p.m., December the 5th, 1949. This would be on the same location the present theater building is now situated. And the uh, first feature shown at that particular time, December 5, 6, Monday and Tuesday, was James Stewart, June Allison, in the MGM production of The Stratton Story. One of the good old favorite baseball pitchers of years gone by. The passing years in Macadam. Some of the features shown at the opening of the Vogue Theater, December the 5th, 1949, was Betty Grable and Dan Daly, When My Baby Smiles at Me, and John Wayne in Wake of the Red Witch, way back in 1949 here in McAdam. favorite weekend movies at that particular time would be uh, Randolph Scott in the motion picture Canadian Pacific and above that would be uh, see, look for the silver lining amazement part to me would be what you're looking at now on your television screen. The admission prices. Back in 1949, December 1949. Adults were 36 cents, children 27 cents, and with the tax, well, you see it on your screen. And at the matinees, well, it was 30 cents for adults and children, just 10 cents. And it still leaves me wondering somewhat how, in heaven's sake, could they ever build a new theater building with admission prices like that? However, I guess the uh, times have changed and uh, there's a certain word of inflation would be added to that. So there you are, the admission prices back in 1949 at the Vogue Theater new building here in McAdam. <laughs> From Channel 11, this is another edition of the Passing Years in Macadam.
From Channel 11, this is another look back in the history of McAdam, the passing years. And the photo we have on our screen right now, a wash down on engine number 2926. And the man with the hose is, is Art Young. And our second photo today shows uh, the coal shed and the powerhouse here in the McAdam Yards. And our third photo today is taking a look east at the old coal shed here in McAdam. And our fourth photo today is the old roundhouse and number 13 door, the unlucky door. And our fifth photo is an old CPR engine number 136, built in 1897 and maintained at McAdam, photographed at Penland near Chipman. From Channel 11, this is your McAdam Community Television System, looking back through the years. And this photo was taken at the West School again and photographed the same year, 1935. And the teacher in that particular class, grade two, was Miss Nellie Piercy.
And one of your uh, favorite basketball teams of the year 1944 is the McAdam girls basketball team, 1944, who held a record of three years and never winning a game. So that's the McAdam girls basketball team, the year 1944. to uh, thank Mr. and Mrs. John Sangster here in McAdam who loaned Channel 11 these photos. Channel 11, and this has been the passing years in McAdam, the history of McAdam. Stay tuned now for a trip down the beautiful St. Croix River, photographed in 1956. Fabulous Loon Bay Lodge and a wilderness river famed for trout, salmon, and black bass keeps its owners so busy taking care of visiting sportsmen and their families that they seldom have time to check up on the fish stories they hear. This time, however, George and Jean Wheelock are kissing the kids goodbye and are off to ride the Riley St. Croix, and as parents must occasionally do, have a little fun on their own. <laughs> The guides are waiting for the boss. Beecher Scott and Elmo Wright, two prime pundits of the paddle, and other things traditionally woodsy in Canada. Living as they do right on the St. Croix River, the wilderness boundary between Maine and New Brunswick, George and Jean love it when that light chestnut canoe slides out over the water and they feel the pull of the river's current. One bank of the St. Croix is Yankee, Maine. The other is Canadian New Brunswick. During the War of 1812, residents on both sides took a pledge not to fight each other. However, a 40-year boundary dispute got going in the early 19th century. The Sarooslik War was finally settled in 1842. The only recorded bloodshed was a battle between British and Yankee soldiers. All hostilities took place inside a tavern both sides were sharing. Now, of course, the St. Croix is a great river, loaded with sporting fish and spine-tingling rapids. Beecher is ready with pole and paddle, no motor here. Away goes Jean into the swirling white water. Jean has had a taste of spray and the thrill of riding the rapids. And now she can relax again as a new sight comes round the bend. It's a log drive. New Brunswick's pulp logs are piled up all winter. And then, come spring, there's a big drive to the paper mills near the sea. 
your next year's Sunday newspaper is being nudged along with Pike, Cole, and Peavy by the Lumberjacks. Using a pole, Beecher puts Gene into position for the fine fishing that lures sportsmen to the St. Croix. Gene is using a spinning rod. The line comes off the reel like thread off a spool, and bingo, Gene has a strike. It's as easy as that. Gene's got a smallmouth bass. Here's a fisheye view of a bass in trouble. That's the beauty of spinning from a canoe. Cast anywhere and play your fish in comfort. And now, here he comes, a nice wild bass. Meanwhile, George has his tough little bamboo spinning rod working. There are trout and tackle smashing salmon in the stream, and it's just a question of time before he hooks into one. Every little turn of this big river is a pool, and you never know what you'll hit until it hits. There, a speckled trout, and George plays it on his thread line. And there's a tasty trout for lunch to go with Gene's bass. Before there's time to tell each other fish stories, there's another fast place in the river. And at the foot of the rapids, George wets the old line again, like that. It's a salmon giving the light plastic impregnated rod a working over. Trout, bass, and salmon, one after another and all day long when the fishing is hot from June until September on the St. Croix. The scenic trip takes two days normally, and the Wheelocks take a look to see if Little Falls, the roughest spot on the river, is passable today. It is a boiling torrent. party decides to spend the night and tackle Little Falls in the morning. Everything comes out of the canoes, lest the river rise during the night, and the craft float away. Jean keeps plugging away. This spinning technique has her fascinated. The boss is fascinated too, but he's fascinated with both eyes shut. The roar of the river provides dinner music. In the morning, the water is still hissing and roaring over Little Falls. It's ladies first. Jean is going to make the run. And here she goes into the cauldron, where the action's hot and the water's cold. It's George's turn. And into the clear. When pole and paddle are in the hands of expert rivermen, there's never a mishap on New Brunswick's rivers. Back home, the Wheelock children are waiting to hear tall tales of the trip straight from Mama herself. Not just from fisherman Dad, who tradition says is to be listened to with polite respect, but taken with a grain of salt. And George and Jean and family head up the hill to Loon Bay Lodge, full of the fishing fun and the whitewater thrills of a New Brunswick canoe man's holiday. Thank <laughs> you.